So good evening. So before we actually begin, I just wanted to come out and thank you for coming. Uh, a year ago at this time, we were just talking in the basement, uh, a year ago at this time, people were uh, doing little parts on their phones and that was getting sent in to, a, and people were putting that together on a computer program and somehow, so it was all kind of like, you know, videotaped or recorded. And, and, and I know that we don't have a full, you know, the ability to have every seat taken, but it sure is a step up from last year. So thank you all for being here. And I also thank you that we're following the protocols as best as we can. Uh, that's why we had to limit this to a certain amount of uh, total number of people who could be here, uh, unfortunately, but glad that you're here and glad that you're wearing a mask. If you need a mask, uh, the ushers have them in the back. Uh, and I'm sure if you raise your hand, they'd be glad to, to give you one. The, I just want to point out that tonight, the, all of the choir members will be singing with masks on, which is, you know, it's kind of like, do you remember when people would do Olympic diving and they would say, you know, and this has a you know, difficulty factor of three. Well, this is like jumping the difficulty factor up to be taking those breaths and breathing through that. So, you know, I'm just really you know, thankful that they were willing to, uh, to do that. Another thing this I'm going to, I'll toss out is that usually we have three or four music programs a year. So if you've been here before, we've had a, we have a number of uh, music uh, offerings that we do that are all presented in a sense, in addition to what uh, is done by the music program for church. And so uh, tonight there will be an offering which many of you have been faithful uh, givers to, but tonight there will be an offering at a certain point. And I just remember, um, these are things we were unable to do in the past, so you just may want to think about that for the continuation of our music program. So I think the, uh, the troops are coming up the hall, so we'll begin in just a, just a minute.
Good evening. So I'm Father Taylor Albright, and on behalf of the worshiping community here at Trinity Church, it's my pleasure to welcome you to another year of lessons and carols. This year marks the 103rd year of lessons and carols. And in light of what we have experienced over these last 20 months, with the multi-layered effects of COVID, deep divisions challenging our country, school shootings, and with all that we have been hearing and enduring that happening in the world, Lessons and Carols may be more relevant this year than in any year of our memory. The tradition began in King's College in Cambridge, England in 1918. So remember that year, 1918. It was the idea of a priest <clears throat> who had been ordained just four years before. His name was Eric Milner White. And he had just returned from serving as a military chaplain during the horrors of World War I. In just a few years during that war, nearly a quarter of the students at King's College, where he served, had died. And the war was not over yet. And so Eric Milner White wanted to present something, to offer something during the Christmas season that was filled with light and hope and that would remind people that God is still at work in this world and that God's plan from beginning to end was still ongoing. And he wanted to be able to do that with the beauty and familiar words of music and hymns. The big picture offered at Christmas in 1918, I can't imagine anything more for appropriate for us this year in 2021, given his intentions. So tonight, allow the familiar words of both scripture and song and the hymns, allow them to be more than just a concert. Allow them to touch, perhaps even heal your souls, to bring hope, to revive our hearts, and to remind us that God is still at work in all that's happening in this world, and that there is still love, faith, and beauty in this world. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild. Jesus Christ, a little child.
Beloved in Christ, be it this Advent our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first day of our disobedience unto the glorious re redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this chapel dedicated to our holy and ever-living God, glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of this whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in the Episcopal Church and in this Diocese of Connecticut, that our bishops and priests may with passion and faithfulness spread the good news of God's kingdom. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and they that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven by saying, Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty. Even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. And now praying together as our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of woman shall bruise the serpent's head. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of thee in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, 
because you have done this. Cursed are you above all cattle and above all wild animals. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall, be, and you shall bruise his heel. Thanks be to God. promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God.
Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The prophet Micah foretells the place of Christ's holy birth. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrah, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in travail has brought forth. Then the rest of his brethren shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you, will, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 
St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be enrolled each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
the shepherds go to the manger. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on peace, peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
the wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will give, govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. The star in the sky over Bethlehem, two for the hands that will rock him to sleep, three for the kings bringing gold, bringing myrrh, bringing incense. that watch over his bedside, blue for the robe of the sweet Virgin Mary, white for the dawn of this first Christmas day. shed for us all on Good Friday, black for the tomb where he rested till Easter, lullaby see Jesus asleep, angels and shepherds their watch on him keep. Lullaby, he soon will awake, for the oxen are stirring 
and morning will break. One for the star in the sky over Bethlehem. Two for the hands that will rock him to sleep. Three for the kings bringing gold, bringing myrrh, bringing incense. Four for the angels that watch over his bedside. And one for the heart, one for the heart, one for the heart that I give as my offering to Jesus. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for a testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light. That true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father. Thanks be to God. Did you see? Did you see? 
And now if you'd please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior, Jesus Christ, came among us in great humility sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
lessons and carols. We have one more song. It's actually an instrumental piece as the choir recesses. So we hope you will enjoy that as well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.